some darn fool. But I'll admit one thing, of course, you're a darn sight better than a horse. Scraggly, scrawny hair, long ears, short legs, but I don't care. You're still more fair. Let me get one of these. And... Oh, bear. You're a Missouri. That's pretty good, Jughead. You want one? Just a minute. I'll get it for you. Just a poor old man. I ain't got nothing but a dent fry pan and a two dollar watch and a stupid jackass. You wouldn't want to hurt a pitiful old man, would you? How about you? You got me good. I done told him twice, Jughead. Take cover, Jughead. I'll cut you in two. Handy? Handy random. It's me, Nick Barkley. Barkley? One of Tom Barkley's sons, remember? Tom Barkley? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure, I caught up with the feller that shot him. Killed him, didn't I? Uh, that's right. Uh, would you mind? Oh. Yeah? Well, now there sure is a surprise. How have you been? Well, I can't complain. I can't complain. <laughs> <laughs> Say, tell me something. How is that pretty mother of yours and that little button-nosed, black-haired sister? Well, now, Audra is a blonde, and uh, they're both fine. Oh, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> you got to forgive me. I forget things. Well, we don't. And the family would never forgive me if I forgot to ask you back to the house for a few days. Well, I ain't exactly shined up for visiting. Uh, no, 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 no. I dress all poor mouth for the trail. That's so hold-up men won't be wasting their time. I Besides, see. that fella that killed your daddy put a slug in my arm. My shooting arm. Kind of slowed me down on defense. Oh, no, I'm sorry to hear that. It's all right. I learned to scratch with the other hand. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, are you going to uh, join me going back to the house, or uh, it'll get me in an awful lot of trouble? Well, I wouldn't want to get you in any trouble. <laughs> that seemed to me, uh, Handy, I heard some shooting as I was riding up. Oh, a couple of young fellers. They tried to dry ghost me. What they wanted to get out of me, I don't know. Well, Andy, they probably thought you were working for us. Right now, around here, the Barkley brand is not much better than a target. Oh, dear. Yeah. So, senor, we have no choice. We must leave like the others. All right, Pedro. After all, you're hired to harvest, not to get shot at. My wife, my children. Without me, they are lost. They have no one else, senor. We will return when you tell us it is safe. I understand. Here, this will help you on your journey. Oh, gracias. Muchas gracias. Vaya con Dios, amigo. Adios. Well, we're having beefsteak, friolis, potatoes, and cornbread for lunch. Be there when the bell rings or you'll eat it cold. 
Well, you know, Mother only left at 9 o'clock this morning, but I miss her already. Well, just don't forget, I'm running the house this week. Uh-huh. Well, in that case, I'll have ham and eggs for lunch. <laughs> Guess who I brought with me? Fifty harvest hands, I hope. Oh, no, no luck there. Come on in. Mr. Random! <laughs> Handy oh, Random, why, you old rascal, this yeah. is a surprise. Come yeah. in, come well. in. It's good to see you. <laughs> Nick, how long has it been? Oh, about six <laughs> years, I say. Well, now, what have you been up to? Where have you been? Oh, around and about, chasing a dollar here and there. Of course, a wrangler with one bad arm made an overwhelming demand. And I'm working sheep now. You know them little critters kind of cute once you get used to them. <laughs> I'm on the way south right now. I got a little teensy grub steak. I'm going to buy in on a sheep's bread. Hey, now, wait a minute. Where is that pretty mother of yours? Well, she's uh, gone to Denver to visit her sister. Oh, more's a pity. I did want to smile on her. Well, she sure will be sorry she missed you, Henry. Yeah. I'll get some tea. Tea? Uh, I think, Audra, that... Uh, Handy would like something a little more uh, substantial. Audra, just set another place for lunch. Sit down, Handy. Well, thank you. Thank Sherry, you. brandy, whiskey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll start with the whiskey. <laughs> and to think I thought there for a minute a while back I was riding into unneighborly territory. Oh? Yeah. <laughs> Handy came through one of the groves and Craddock took a shot at him. Fine neighbors you got there. Uh, oranges are good, but they ain't that good. But that was. <laughs> well, I apologize for that, Handy. But actually, those are our oranges. Your are. Well, why wasn't you shooting at me instead of them young'uns? Well, because Craddock believes the land belongs to him. You see, Handy, the divider between our property and his is Green Creek. Now, a little while ago, we had a flash flood, and it changed the course of the creek. It cut way into our property, put a big chunk of our groves on his side of the divider. Ever since then, he's claimed it was an act of God, and now the land belongs to him. He and his men have been taking pot shots at everyone riding through. Scared off half our harvest hands. Well, what are you going to do about it? Well, we've taken it to court. Case comes up in about six weeks. Six weeks? Why, them oranges is plum ready to be pulled right now. Yeah, we know. No, oh, excuse me. <laughs> What are they worth? About five thousand dollars. Five thousand dollars? And that's really the least of our problems. Craddock is strictly a cattle man. Now, the minute he harvests those oranges, he's going to go in there and cut down those trees and turn the land back to pasture. He spent years cultivating just to prove we could grow oranges here. Well, I pondered long enough. I got a simple and easy solution to the whole matter. <laughs> What's that? Mount up right over there and teach him some shotgun manners. Now, now, wait a minute, Andy. That's the last thing we need around here, range war. Well, it appears to me you've already got one. Now, they've fired at me going through them orange groves. But I give them what for. <laughs> what do you mean? You didn't hit him yet. <laughs> well, it wasn't more than 40 foot away. Oh, well... Look, Andy, we're going to have lunch in a couple of minutes. Maybe you'd like to wash up. Wash up? Oh, wash up. Yes, well, sure, sure. As a matter of fact, that orange juice makes your fingers stick together. <laughs> Is that room still upstairs where it used to be? Third door on the right. Well, I'll see you soon. You're a good provider. <clears throat> it's too bad that had to happen. Up to now, this thing has been bloodless. Did you ever think for a minute it wouldn't happen? It'll have to be reported. Nick, you better drop in and see the sheriff while you're in town. Oh, so he can take his usual firm stand, huh? Straddling the fence. Well, how'd it go? Well, the word's out. Working for the Barclays is a short career. Oh. Well, uh, you two boys better go into lunch. Uh, tell Audra I'll eat in town. Coward. Yeah. No harvest hands, huh? No, but if Saddle Source could pick oranges, we'd be out of the woods. Don't look like you had much luck either. No, I didn't. Say, by the way, we have a house guest that you'll probably be interested to meet. And does he pick oranges? No, but he shoots at Craddock's. <laughs> Might be a step in the right direction. Who is he? He shot the man who killed father. Uh, Audra told me stories about him. <laughs> hey, I tell you, that little room up there, 
Here's a wonder. Last time I was here, I couldn't figure out how you got that water to run uphill. Andy, here's the brother you haven't met. This is Heath, Andy Ranton. Wow, how do you do, young fella? Mighty nice to... Lunch is ready. I've got work to do. I'll eat with the hands. Heath. Well, who put a cockle burr on his shirt there? Afternoon, Nick. Fred, I'd like to report a shooting. I was just going to ride out to see you about that. Craddock's been here already, huh? Mm-hmm. He says one of your men peppered up two of his sons pretty bad. Fred, it wasn't one of our men. It was a guest of ours that accidentally walked on the grove and shot to defend himself. Mm -hmm. Craddock claimed he was your hired gun. Fred, it was handy random. Oh. Oh, now, come on. Why the sour look? Well, it riled some people that he shot that man in the back. When a killer is running away from you, it is the customary place to shoot him. Besides, you wouldn't say they were just a little bit riled up because they found out the reward was going to an outsider. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I'll fill out a report on it. And you be sure to add to that report that Craddock fired first. Man has a right to post a no trespassing sign and back it up with a gun. Not when he posts someone else's property, friend. Well, we've been through all this before. It'll all come out in court. Not until the crop is lost. It never occurred to you that maybe Craddock is right. I say he isn't. Now, Nick, you're asking me to be judge and jury, and I'm just not qualified to do that. Now, my sworn duty only covers keeping you all from killing each other until the case is heard. Well, you may have to go to work sooner than you think. Well, how's that? I'm going out with old man Craddock's. Well, you know I can't guarantee your safety. The thing that happened this morning in the Grove was very unfortunate. Hiring a gunfighter is always... Andy Random is not a gunfighter, and we did not hire him. I'd know a professional. He stalked my boys like a prairie wolf. Frank saw how you greeted him. I suppose he's a house guest? Yes, as a matter of fact, he is. You've had time to think of a better story than that. No, 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 wait a minute. We have a difference of opinion, Craddock. And that shooting this morning has nothing whatever to do with it, unless you'd like it to go on and build up into a great range war. That's already happened. Up to now, we've been shooting high. From now on, we aim dead center. Oh, now, that's very foolish, Craddock. Very foolish indeed. What exactly do you want? I want to talk. I want to talk about orange groves. The Lord giveth, and the Lord taketh away. You want to come around here whining about his decisions? You're wasting your time. Nick Barkley, your family comes of honest stock. They're good people. I'm telling you that so you'll know I hate you all on a personal rather than on a moral basis. While you and yours were busily inheriting this valley, me and mine were busy coaxing potatoes out of a main marble field. You ever get down on your hands and knees and beg a potato to get fat? Did you ever get so mad you took a tree branch and beat an apple because it shriveled on a twig? No. You don't even know the taste of a pig's foot. Or a hen's neck. You've been raised on the fat of the hog wait, and the wait, breast wait, of the chicken. Hold it, hold it, Craddock, hold it. You're not the only man that managed to scrape out a ranch with his fingernails or eye teeth. We had just as many rocks on our land as you did, just as many tree stumps as you did. But there's another reason, the real reason. Like Frank here, came to call on Audra and got turned down. Anybody that's too good for my sons is too good for my bounty. Audra has a mind of her own. She's the only Barkley will ever set a welcome put on my property. Let me tell you this. If I owe you a dollar, I'll follow you to Timbuktu to pay you. But I'll chase you twice as far if you overcharge me. My land is my land. And I wouldn't give you a rock off of it to kill a rattlesnake. Does that make my position clear? All right, let's simmer down. Let's simmer down a minute. I'll tell you what. We'll harvest the oranges, put the money into escrow. The one that wins the case gets the money. I've turned that offer down before. 
Now, after what your man did to my boys... I keep trying to tell you he was not our man. He just shoots my sons and lives in your house. He wasn't when he did. But he didn't, he is. We're not getting too far, are we? At least you aren't. You want this whole thing to build into a range war, don't you? I'm going to pick those oranges and chop down those trees and plant alfalfa. And if I find any Barclays on that property, I'll plant them too. Sight better than a horse. Long on ears, short on legs. I don't know what I can be. You're a Missouri canary, but you can't sit in a tree. Mr. Oh, what? What? Well, oh, I <laughs> misordered it. Oh, my God. Oh, well. Now, look here. Don't... You must never cat foot up on a fellow that way. Oh. I startled you. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, that's, that's all right. I brought you a present. Huh? Present? For, for me? Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> present? Well, I don't believe I ever... I ever got a present off for me before. Well, go on, open it. No, 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 no. I want to savor it for a minute there. <laughs> yeah, all righty. Here we go. Well, well, I swan. What do you know about that? <laughs> yes, sir. Well, yes, that's just what I've been needing, a, a long piece of cloth. Oh, it's a muffler, Mr. Random. You, you put it around the top of your head during the wintertime. Keeps away the snorts and oh, sniffles. Yeah, well, heavens, I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> sure, there you go. Look at that. Hey, and it holds your hat on, too. Keeps it from blowing off. That's exactly what it does. <laughs> sure. Remember that chill you had when you were here before? Oh, I'll never forget it. Took me nigh to a month to get over it. You put me back together. You spoon-fed me the whole time. I've never forgotten that. <laughs> and remember when you left, you gave me a necklace made out of Arrowhead? I still have it. Oh, well. Well, you know. Ah. <laughs> uh, Stay right there. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Open. Ah. See that gun there? That is the gun that killed the man that killed your daddy. <laughs> there, she's yours. Oh, that's Bargreaves. That's Bargreaves. That makes it. <laughs> That makes her slip out of the holster just as slick as ice. And I want you to see something here. Look here. See that thong right there? Well, that holds the trigger back so the hammer don't catch you. And if you're a fanner, which I was, you file off the rat tail, let you down the hammer there. Don't scratch your hand that way. The sights are gone. Oh, sure. Sights are gone. You file off the sights. If you can't hit a man without aiming at him, you use a shotgun or a rifle. Well, that I sounds want... very professional. <laughs> well, I learned that self-defense, you see. I want your family to have this. Kind of a sentimental piece. I can't use it anywhere with this bad wrist anymore. Thank you, Mr. Random, but I really can't accept it. Well, she... oh, oh well, I yes, I see. Yes, I see what you mean. You you don't want to have her around to to look at. But your kind offer is appreciated. You know, it's a sad state of affairs when a man my age ain't got nothing to offer her except <laughs> broke gun, broke wrist, bent frying pan, and a mud-colored jacket. <laughs> Name is order. That uh, one brother of yours, not Heath. Heath is ill-mannered. Uh, well, he sure got it hard against me. I don't remember him. Of course, I do forget things. Dinner's at 7, Mr. Random. Dinner. Well, the only thing that'll keep me from dinner is a lot of money, a good horse, or a beautiful woman like you, Miss Hodra. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hush up. Can't I talk to nobody but you? I gotta have some social life, Jughead. <laughs> Oh, 
Barkley, what's come over you? What do you mean? Well, I think you owe us an explanation. For what? For your behavior toward Handy Random. Where'd you learn your manners? Well, the same place I learned a lot of other things. Well, I think you owe him an apology. What have you got against that poor old farmer? He's no farmer. That's not dirt on his hands, that's powder burns. He wouldn't know a yam from a carrot if it wasn't cooked and put on a plate in front of him. Handy Random is a friend of this family's, and as long as you're part of it, he's a friend of yours. I think I have the right to pick my own friends. Well, I was right about the sheriff. Well, how'd you make out? Still straddling the fence. So I went over to Craddock's myself. And you're just lucky you didn't get your head blown off. Uh, did you get anywhere with him? Nope. Maybe if I went over to Craddock's. You stay off Craddock's land, Audra. Unfortunately, Handy Random's got us in quite a bit of trouble. Joe and Frank were pretty badly peppered. Peppered? Well, not that I'm saying it's Handy's fault. Well, I am plumb sorry that I caused you folks this trouble. Now, you didn't cause the trouble, Handy. You just caught up with it, that's all. Well, still and all, I feel responsible, but I got an ID. Now, how many of them Craddocks is there? Fifteen, maybe twenty. You give me five hundred dollars, and I will guarantee that starting tomorrow, you can pick all the oranges you want, and nobody will buy And just how would you manage that? powers of persuasion. I hope you're not serious. Well, now, look here. You pick them oranges right now or you can forget them. <laughs> you're going to pluck oranges, you're going to pluck credits. I don't know. Wait a minute, Andy, now. That's exactly what we don't want. They say you're trespassing, you say they's trespassing. Now, why ain't we got just as much right to shoot them as they got to shoot us? And I'll tell you another thing. You say you're going to go get harvest hands. Well, if and you do get them, which I dearly doubt, you're going to just send them out there to be shot by Craddock? All right, now. If you change your mind, I'll be around. But mark my words. Before this is out, you're going to need my services. See you at supper. I figured he'd get around to that proposition sooner or later. All right, Heath, let's have it. What do you know about him that we don't? Well, what would you think of a man who makes his living following feuds? Starts them if they don't exist. And sells his gun to the highest bidder. Where'd you run into him before? A couple of years ago, he was in the Lincoln County Wars. It didn't make much difference which side you were on. Both paid the same. $25 for signing up and $25 for every saddle turned into the paymaster. The saddle was proof of death. But the paymaster never knew who the saddles belonged to. So you could face your enemy and kill him, or you could hang back and see all those beautiful, unguarded backs of your friends. I take it you were in the fight also. Well, I was just a kid fighting for what I thought was right. I took my $25, and two days later, I got a bag full of carpet tacks and horseshoe nail heads. Handy comes running up to polish me off with a knife. I was able to take a gun butt to him, but it didn't help. What do you mean? Well, I made it up a ravine, and while I was trying to decide whether to live or die, he came to, stole my saddle, and turned it in for the money. Why didn't he recognize you? Well, he's old. And he's looked down that barrel at a lot of people besides me. How come you didn't mention this before? Well, how could I? You all were so fired up about him. That old man's a walking plague. And the sooner we get rid of him, the better. Clean 
fingernails now. Oh, look what you done to my knife. I got enough jags in there for a hair comb. Well, we'll just heat her up. And we'll flatten her out like a pancake, and we'll have a whittly comb that you can shave with. Hey, you know, Jug, you wouldn't look so bad, bare face, neither would I, for that matter. Then if a fella called us a bare face liar, he wouldn't be lying. <laughs> oh. Well, sir. That's good and hot. Hey, now, Jug. That young feller up there at the house, you know the youngin with his lower lip stuck out and he's shining them rifles? Can't put him. Of course, he takes to me like a water moccasin do to a toady frog, but there's no accounting for tape. I do believe I've seen him summers before. Well, it'll come to me by and by. You know, you and me is going to make some money, don't you? <laughs> yeah, we're going to make her. <laughs> hey, now. Look at here. Jug? Jug, wouldn't them nails make a fine big hole in the feller? for supper. Well, I just tidying up my jackass. I'll go get washed up right away. Andy, I want a word with you. But my offer, but my offer. Oh, believe me, you won't regret it. I would just admire like all outdoors working for you folks, even though there is one who don't cotton to me. Andy, we've discussed it and we've decided that it would be better for everyone concerned if you just mounted up and rode out of here right now. Well, well, there's, there's your oranges. <laughs> what a waste. <laughs> you know, city fellas, they don't feel about crops the way you and me do. We're country, outdoors. I can tell you, are by them crinks around your eyes and that spit on your lip from the wind. And the way you wear your gun hung low. You ain't got the cut of a man who'd let somebody waltz off with his oranges. What do you expect us to do, Andy? Wait for some night where we can sneak up on them and shoot them in the head while they're asleep? No, we just post our own no trespassing sign. Then we light a little fire down there in the grove. When the critics come down to put her out, ping, ping, we just lay them out deader than mackerels and legal. Having you for a partner, Andy, is something like having a rattlesnake in your hip pocket. Oh. You got no reason to mean mouth me, boy. Andy, now it'd be much simpler if you just ride out. Now, here's a hundred dollars. I said five hundred. You don't have to do anything for this except ride out. Take it, Andy. Oh, Charity, that pure sticks in my craw. Better ride out, old man. You know, there's one thing worse than charity, and that's an uppity youngin. You always start a fight with a gun in your hand, do you, boy? Do you? I'm a gunfighter. You've had your back up again me ever since we first met here this afternoon. Why? You drag us me once. Well, it appears like I didn't do a very good job. I can't put you. Maybe it's because I slammed your head with that gun butt. Lincoln County Wars. Lincoln County Wars, sure. Sure, that's it. Well, Sonny, you should have finished that job right then and there, or you should have killed me when you met me here, because that's what I aim to do to you. Fighting fair is going to be the end of you one day, because you're going to run across a man, sooner or later, who don't. Next time you see me with my back turned, you better kill me, because that's what I aim to do to you. Now, I'd like to apologize to each and every one of you. For what? For having to kill you if you ever step on Craddock land. You're working for Craddock? Not yet, but there's two sides to every question. Shardown, 
one leg. I don't know what I can beg for you. You must hurry, can. Now listen, Jughead. I want you to go ahead without me. I'll be with you shortly. You understand? Go. Go on. Go on. Get going. That's a fine figure of a horse if I ever saw one. Is that a Tennessee Walker or a Texas Trotter? That well, looks like the jackass the old man was riding. Oh, ain't that old? And if you boys want to get any old, you drop them irons right now. Drop them right now. All of it. All of it. Come on. All of it. All right, now mount up. Mount up. Come on. Oh, don't scare me, boys. I'm an old man and I'll kill you. Uh, I'm happy-go-lucky, and I just come here for a genial chat, so you just take me to your boss, or I'll shoot you in the face. Now, get. This is the man that shot us. Craddock, you here to collect some bullet holes? <laughs> boy, boy, get up, get up and get over there. Get, get it. As soon as I can see you. Paul, you better tell these boys next time not to shoot at a man lest they mean to see him dead. I already have. Any reason why you shouldn't beat the next one? Oh, I got some pretty good reasons right here in these barrels. Little pieces of glass like the doc took out of my boys. No, oh, it's gravel this time. It cuts down on my overhead. Did you know that double-aught buckshot is up to a dime a pound? You are a professional gunman. You won't leave here alive. There are three of us and you've only got two shots. Only take one for you. But I don't want to shoot you. I may want to work for you. Price being right, natural. Say out what you're saying. Well, you got a feud going here. I specialize in them things. Now, the Barclays got certain pints. You got certain pints. For a price, I'll make your points, I'll point their points. What price? Well, on the reverse side, we was speaking of $500, but you add $100 to that, and I'll guarantee the Barclays don't step on your property. Why are you switching sides? I'm not, unless you come up with an extra 100 Satisfaction guaranteed. So they didn't pay you to shoot my boys? Oh, now, let's just say that they spread a soft bed, a fine table. And they do pour generous. Frank, you can get out the bottle of liquor. Now, what do I get for my money? Guarantee. The Barclays won't pick them oranges the way they want to. Won't stop you from chopping down them trees the way you want to. Guarantee. Seems strange you switching sides. You being the one that got old Tom Barclays killer. Oh, they got a new member of the family over there. I'll tangle with him. Here. Joe? Thank you, boy. You get some sugar to sweeten this man's drink? Well, that's nice. Thank you. That's fine. Thank you. Well? No luck. The judge has gone fishing up at Crystal Lake for a week. Well, maybe go by the county attorney's office and check him out, see what he can do. No. No, if we're going to enjoin him from cutting down those trees, the injunction has to be signed by the judge. No. I think I'd better ride up there and try and find him. Good luck. I think I'd better go on past the depot, see if that barbed wire has come in. Then by the time I get home, I just might be hungry enough to eat Audra's cooking, if you can get that hungry. <laughs> Silence. Mr. 
Steve, you got back early. What did the judge say? Well, the judge has gone up to Crystal Lake, but Jared rode up to try and find him. Oh, I'll fetch you some lunch. Where's the grand hostess? Miss Audrey left about 10 minutes ago. Oh, well, where'd she go? She didn't say, just headed up the North Road. North, toward the Craddocks? I suppose she'd get there, she rode far enough, but she wouldn't. She might. Even if she did, the Craddocks wouldn't shoot Miss Audra. Yeah, but Handy Random is no Craddocks. <laughs> Stop right there, Miss Barkley. Riding in here, you Barkleys are full of surprises, aren't you? I wanted to talk to you. A little late, isn't it? Like about two months? Frank, I have to warn you. About what? Handy Random. Is he working for you? In a manner of speaking, why? He's a killer, Mr. Craddock. Now, that's right strange. When he works for you, he's a guest. When he works for me, he's a killer. He never worked for us. You come out here to offer him more money? We never offered him any money. He said your family offered him $500. The offer came from him. My brothers threw him out. We were wrong about him. He's a killer. That's why I want him on my side instead of yours. Handy Random is on his own side. A pretty lady like you ought to have women's work to keep her busy. If you men would handle things better, I'd have time to. As it is, my dinner is probably ruined. You know, my place needs a woman's touch. I never had a daughter. My sons are good boys. They never been in trouble. I'd take a bull whip to the first one of them and took a drink. Now, if you were to take a liking to Frank here, I might be inclined to give that orange grove to the first one of my boys to present me with a grandchild. Mr. Craddock, I came here to stop something, not to start it. We're not talking about the same things. You want to talk about grandchildren, and I want to talk about oranges. Exactly. I'm sorry. I'm just not ready to get married. Frank, he is overdue. He's most 30. I don't beg. I'm just trying to find a solution. She's made it pretty clear I'm not it. Frank, I'm sorry. See Miss Audrey safely off the property. I never got no escort when they showed me the road. You just do as I say. Destroying that grove is wrong. My father knows what he's doing. Does he know what Handy Random's doing? You people brought that old man into this valley. We didn't. He just rode in. Don't you understand? His only purpose is to get one set of us mad at... mad enough that the other set hires him. Sides mean nothing to him. You're just saying that because we have him. Look, this far enough. You can make it home safe by yourself from here. You got turned down once, and now you're returning the favor? In spades. Good day, Miss Barkley. You know better than to ride out here alone. Now, let's go. Look out! Say, Miss... 
Miss Audra! Young fella? Say, I'm plumb sorry about that. That was a mistake. I... I didn't mean that at all. No, I'm real sorry. So, uh, come on out. Come on out now. I'm sorry. on a man with your gun out unless you mean to kill him. Miss Order, see what I mean? There's nothing to fear at all. I even fired the other barrel. Come on out. You got nothing to fear. Led him into an ambush. He's got a chest full of gravel. He said gravel cut down on his overhead. I'm sorry, son. Joe, take your brother home. I'm going to find that old man. so I can see you. I've been shot a lot, but I don't believe I ever collected one quite like this one. I don't know what got into me. Turning on my old friends, the Barclays, like that. I reckon old Devil Grease has come in through my ear and sat down on my brain. <laughs> I always figured that I'd live forever. But... The trouble with his dying business, it makes you feel like a plum darned fool. I always hoped if when I did die, I'd be out of town at the time. Somebody'd have to come and tell me about it later. I guess it's something everybody has to do for himself. I... <laughs> it's cold. This dying business. Cold. Would you? Get a, a blanket out, out of my gear, boy. Please. Take my jacket.
Audrey, you didn't kill him. I don't think I did either. That old man's been dead for a long time. We buried him down by the creek. On which side? Our side. You should have left him for the buzzards. Uh, even the buzzards would do some consideration, don't you think? The Lord works in strange and wonderful ways. You were beholden to that old man for avenging a wrong done to your family. Now I'm beholden to you for the same thing. Mr. Craddock, you don't owe us anything. In some religions, nobody works for two weeks following the death of a member of the family. Picking oranges is work. What religion is that, Mr. Craddock? My religion. What are you driving at, Craddock? I thought you might pick those oranges and dispose of them. I'm not familiar with the market. We can do that, can't we? This is no admission those groves aren't mine. We'll let the court decide that. But if it should, fine for you. You'll owe us for the harvesting costs. Done. I'll have Joe remove the posted signs. Well, I guess there's no need for this injunction. We'll just take our chances in court. Just riding by, I thought I'd drop in and say hello. Hey, you remember that time when we was down in Tucson? You took that job busting Bronx, huh? What do you want, Ward? I told you I was just riding by and I... <laughs> okay, so I was not exactly just riding by. As a matter of fact, I come to ask a favor of you. You want to borrow some more money, Ward? You know me pretty well, don't you, old buddy? Yeah, Ward, I know you pretty well. Well, I need a hundred bucks here. I plan to do some fixing up around that old stump ranch of mine. That's the same excuse you gave me last month to borrow fifty dollars. <laughs> I've got to learn to keep my story straight, don't I? Say hello to Nora for me. Yeah. Oh, he, I, I really do need that money, old buddy. give you a chance to earn it. 
Ern? How? Break that bronc. <laughs> Are you serious? Well, I mean, that's it. That's it. Okay. Hold it, Dave. Mr. Whitcomb's gonna ride this one. Okay, Heath. What's Whitcomb doing out there? Oh, Nick, honey, not now. Who's this? It isn't serious, is it? We don't know yet. Mother, this is Ward's wife, Nora. And this is my brother, Nick. How do you do? I'm so sorry. How did this happen? Well, it was my idea. Well, where is he? Here comes the doctor now. Doctor, this is Mrs. Whitcomb. How do you do, Mrs. Whitcomb? Oh, it's going to be all right, isn't he, Doctor? Well, it's a little too early to tell. Well, what is it? His legs. They're paralyzed. Now, it could be a temporary condition, a small spinal fracture impinging on a nerve. I'm afraid only time can tell us that. Well, there must be something you can do. Very little, for the moment. I've given him something to uh, reduce the pain and help him sleep. He mustn't be moved, not for the present, at least. Can I see him? Of course. I'll take you up to him. I'll drop by tomorrow. Oh, thank you, sir. Goodbye now. Bye. Whitcomb ever been on a bronc before? Accidents happen. You're not answering the question. I don't know. You don't know. You put a man up on a bronc and you don't know. Get your spurs out of me. Heath. All right, I guess I came down a little too heavy. What are you going to do? I'll break that horse. Go ahead. Break your back. If you think it will help. Silas has some supper for you. I'm not hungry. Oh, Heath, it was an accident. Nick was right. I shouldn't have made him ride that horse. Why did you? All of a sudden, I got fed up with him coming around asking for money. I was going to make him earn it. Well, I guess I did, didn't I? How much money have you given him? Around 300. Why? Because he's an old friend. Is that the only reason? When he came to Stockton a couple of months ago, he picked up the old Palmer place, and he kept talking how he's gonna fix it up and settle down. Oh, I know he didn't mean it, but... Look, when you've, when you've grown up with someone, when you've worked with them, ridden with them, hunted with them. 
You can't help but feel something. That you owe him something? Not that exactly, but that you've got to help him. You just don't know how it was with Ward. He, he never could make anything work. Did he really try? Oh, a couple of times, but he was always getting lost in some scheme for striking it rich. And he always talked about how we were going to live off the fat of the land when he made that big strike. But he never did. Suddenly, all of Ward's dreams came true. But not for him, for you. And now you feel guilty about it. That's the truth, isn't it? I don't know. Oh, I think Ward does. I think he wants you to feel that you owe him something. And now I do. Oh, I don't know. I just felt like laughing. I remember when we used to laugh about nothing. We used to laugh all the time. We still do. Alone. Oh, come on, honey. Cheer up. I'm going to be out of this bed and on my feet in no time at all. I'm sure you will. And then you know what we're going to do? What? We're going to buy you a new outfit from your head to your toe and go to San Francisco and have ourselves a real time. Now, how do you like that? I love it. Of course, I'm going to have to mix some business with pleasure. I know some men I just might be able to get interested in that Logan deal of Montana Shad Martin was telling me about. You know, if I could bring some... Some investors to Shad, why? Well, he'd just have to cut me in on that timber deal. You know that, don't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I guess he would. And then we... We could buy us a spread just like this one. And hire somebody to run it for us. <laughs> now, would that be some To have a place just like this? Oh, I'm going to get myself in on that timber deal of Shad some way. I'm not going to miss this chance. I mean that, honey. Yes, Ward. Saw the doctor driving away. What did he say? I can take Ward home tomorrow. Home? But don't you think he ought to stay here where he can get the attention he needs? Well, he can get all the attention he needs at home. And besides, we can't impose any longer. You're not imposing. All right. No, I just think he would feel better if he were at home. And I know I would. I'd just be back in my own place, in my own kitchen, and... Well, you know what a nester I am. Don't just don't worry about us. We'll be fine. All right. Uh, it's Wake. Would you like to see him? Morning, Nora. Good morning. Heath. Heath, uh, I'd like to have a word with you overnight. Tell Ward I'll be up in a minute. Boy, the sky's falling down. We got about a week's work to do today. West boundary fence needs mending. Got to get a crew of men to work on that road into Long Meadows. And we got about four or five Bronx to bust. And old McCall says if we don't get those cows out to pasture, pre I oh, now, boy, you haven't heard a word I said. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry, Nick. I was just... Oh, look, Heath. Take my word for it. Whitcomb's gonna be all right. Now, I know a lot of men that were in worse condition than he is. And today, they're just as good as ever. I know some men who aren't. Yeah, a good fire do wonders for this place.
Easy now. Nice and gentle. You know, I've been meaning to do some fixing up around here, but well, you know me, Heath. Never do today what you can put off till tomorrow. Well, what's this? Well, I brought it out here this morning for you. Oh, I'll sit well, you down here. Thanks a lot, old buddy. All right. Hey, well, let's give it a whirl. <laughs> and this is all right, you know that? I've been wondering how I was going to get around. Well, uh, I uh, better get on back. Thanks, Nick. Uh, no, none of that. I'll see you at home, all right? Yeah. Thanks for everything, Nick. Uh, uh... Hey, Nora, why don't you get that bottle from the cover so Heath here and me can have a drink? Some other time, would you? Oh, come on now. Cheer up. You look like you just come back from burying me. Ward? Well, he does. And so do you. Oh, look, I know what you're thinking. Poor old Ward. Tied to a wheelchair for the rest of his life, and it's all my fault. Ward, please. Well, don't kid yourself, old buddy. In the first place, it wasn't your fault. Not all of it, anyway. And in the second place, I'm going to be out of this thing before you know about it. As a matter of fact, I've been meaning to talk to you about that. Now, you say that wrong for me, you hear? I still want to earn that hundred bucks. Okay? Okay. I'll see you tomorrow. You do that. <laughs> Oh, no, Heath. <laughs> it's the $100 I promised Ward for riding that bronc. Not for riding it, for breaking it. That's what Ward told me. But how are you going to get by? Well, that's our problem. Ward's mine, not yours. that bronc of yours. But no little old wheelchair is gonna throw me and get away with it. Help after all, old buddy. You told me to fix that board, didn't you? Or somebody got hurt. I think I want to lie down. Put it in the ranch account. This isn't for the ranch. You know Mrs. Whitcomb, don't you? Sure. She comes in for anything you let her have it. I'll pick up the bill later. I, I heard what happened out at the ranch. It's too bad. I, uh... Yeah.
seat. Ward say you wanted to make some repairs around here. Thought I'd get started on them. Morning. Morning, Ward. But, Heath, you can't do that. You've got your own work at the ranch. Now, Nora, don't argue, yeah? Uh, but, Ward... Well, honey, you know Heath. Boy, well, stubborn as a mule. Once he gets his mindset, well, there's, no, there's nothing I can do about it. Leastwise, not in my present condition. You want a cup of coffee before you get to work? No, thanks. Yeah, keep that in from sliding over, will you? Okay. Watch your finger now. Oh, well, I guess I better go around the back way. Now, here. Let me have that. Step up here. Nice sunny humor this morning. He's gone? Mm -hmm. I don't have to ask where, now do I? I suspect not. Mm -hmm. How long is this going to be going on? He's been at the Whitcombs every day this week. Oh, Nick, be a little patient. Patient? How patient can I get? A lot of work to be done around here. Now, take it easy, Nick. Look who's talking. Why, well, I think Nick's right. And since you're so relaxed about it, why don't you stay here and help out instead of going to San Francisco? Quiet, child. Silas! What is it you want? More ham. More ham? Well, I have to do the work for two men, so I figure I better eat the food for two men, don't you? Absolutely. I want to see you. Where's Ward? He's still sleeping. Rode into town just last night. Heard what happened. It's too bad. You don't have a cup of that good coffee yours, do you? You know, the thing I remember most when I stayed with you and Ward in Hangtown that time was your coffee. came to Stockton was to see if Ward could pay me back the money he owed me. What money? <laughs> I guess he never told you about it. But he borrowed 50 bucks from me when you and him left Hangtown. Ah, of course, I... I didn't know about him getting hurt, so I guess I'll just have to forget about it. No, you don't have to forget about it. You've got the money to pay you. It must be hard for you not to have a man around. I mean, uh, a man to do things for you. Well, I was thinking maybe I'd hang around and give you a hand. 
you've got a spare room, I'll move right in. And we ought to be able to work out something about paying that money back. Some other way. Hey, let me go. Let me go! No! 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 Laura? Friend, I didn't know there was somebody here ahead of me. Keith? It's a whiskey jack. A what? A whiskey jack. They're real pesky critters. Kind of a jay. You know they'll steal side pork right out of a hot frying pan? Listen. Uh, uh, how'd you learn to talk to him? Well, I'll have you know I was champion bird caller of Calaveras County before I was 10 years old. Oh, really? Could imitate 20 different kinds of birds. Modoc Indian taught me. <laughs> that was a nice sound, too. It's good to laugh again. Thank you for taking me to church, Heath. Welcome. You know, you've been tied down pretty close these last couple of weeks. Being tied down is one thing I never had enough of. I told you I'm a nester. Most women are. Heath. Heath, I... I don't want you to come around anymore. Ward is using you. It's only been a couple of weeks, Nora. But when does it stop? A couple months? Or a couple years? Uh-uh. Not if Ward doesn't want it to. You know him. You know he has a way of trapping people. Did he trap you? Yeah, I, I suppose so. But for nearly five years, you've stayed with him. Well, you know where it found me. Not yet 17 and already working in a saloon. Whatever he's given me is better than that. And he loves me, Heath. He's given me that. But 
please stay away. Not while he's still in that wheelchair. Please, he do as I ask you. Nora, I don't know where it all ends. But it's not here. Not now. Just because Whitman can't walk, don't mean he can't see. What's going on with Barkley at that ranch every day? Why don't he do something about it? What can he do? I know what I'd do if some guy was fooling around with my woman. You'd be strung up before you knew what happened. I understand you don't kill a Barkley around here and get away with it. Not even half a Barkley. Even if he steals your wife. <laughs> I, uh, I guess you boys are talking for my benefit, so uh, I won't bother asking you to take it back. Get up. You. Who, me? Yeah, you. Up. Sure. We're all thinking the same thing, Barkley. Well, I was wondering what made this thing so bad. <laughs> Finish this outside, I gladly accommodate you. That goes for you too, boy. Well, I don't think they like the odds. Okay, get out. Hey, uh, Milt. Uh, let's make it whiskey this time, huh? Good morning, Mr. Percy. How nice of you to drop by. Please sit down. May I get you something? Tea? Coffee? No, thank you. If you don't mind, I'll come right to the point of my visit. Please do. Mrs. Barclay, last evening at a meeting of the Board of Deacons of the Church, the subject of Heath was brought up. The subject of Heath. Now, what on earth is the subject of Heath? The board has voiced its disapproval of Heath escorting Mrs. Whitcomb to services last Sunday. Go on. The deacons feel that, under the circumstances... What circumstances? Well, surely you've heard the talk. No, Mr. Percy. For the purpose of this conversation, I have not heard the talk. Suppose you tell me about it. Mrs. Barclay, you're making this very difficult. That's my intention. For I will not get down and wallow in the mud with any self-anointed, self-righteous bigots. Mrs. Barclay. Does Reverend Stacy know about this visit? Well, no. And since he is only a servant of the congregation. Is that what he is? Well, now that surprises me, as I'm sure it will Reverend Stacy when I tell him about it. Because I'm sure he's under the impression that he's the servant of much worthier, much higher power. Good day, Mr. Percy. Mrs. Barclay, if I have offended you... You have indeed. And may I suggest that you quit while you're ahead. Good day. Can I help you? I might find something for you to do. Okay. Hold the end of this board for me.
calling it a day? Yeah. Why don't you join me in a drink? Well, come on. to, uh, nothing. What does that mean? Oh, it's just the last couple of days. I don't want Nora to know. Not yet, anyway. Know what? I've stopped kidding myself. I'm never gonna get out of this wheelchair. Oh, Ward, don't talk like that. No, oh, I know. I know I shouldn't feel that way, but... Well, I've been thinking. Now, Nora and I can't go on living like this, Heath. Not depending on you for everything. Don't worry about it. Oh, you, you've been great. Just, just great. But, uh... Well, I want to show you something. Here. Take a look at this. Well, come on, here. I want you to read it. A man I know, Shad Martin, and I were talking about it just before the accident. Uh, timber? Uh -huh. Ten million board feet of it. Just waiting to be cut and sold to the mines in Butte. He already has an option on the timber. Now all he needs is a little capital to buy equipment, hire crews to start cutting. Well, it's all there. Well, take it, read it. It's solid, Heath. It's a chance of a lifetime. How much capital? Oh, I can get 50% of the operation dirt cheap. And you know how much the Montana mines are paying for timber? Well, it's all in there. Chad has all the facts. How much, Ward? $5,000. I don't want to go living on charity for the rest of my life, Heath. Ward, I don't have that kind of money. Yeah, but your family does. Well, yes, but well, I can't... I'm not blaming you for what happened. At least why no more than you're blaming yourself. I mean, I didn't have to ride that horse. But you knew that I wasn't a bronc rider and that something could have happened. Oh, not this bad, no, but... Uh... $5,000 is a lot of money, I guess. Maybe it's too much. Maybe it isn't enough. I don't know what the price of a pair of legs is. Do you? $5,000! I know how much I'm asking, and I know I don't have any right. All right, all right. Now, you just put a cork in that kind of talk, huh? Nick's right. This isn't only your problem, Heath. It's the whole family. And I'd like to put a name on that little problem. It's called blackmail. You don't think we owe him anything? No, no, I'm not saying that, but I am saying he's using Heath. Heath, after all, didn't put a gun to his head to make him ride that bronc. And besides, who says that Whitcomb will ever walk again? Not Doc Morar. On the other hand, he didn't say he would, either. Heath, as far as I'm concerned, you can have the money. Thanks, Jerry. Audra? Well, I think Nick's right. That is blackmail. But if Heath wants the money, Mother, what do you say? Does Nora know about this? I don't know. I doubt it. But she'll go along. She has to. It's either that or go back to some saloon. No. Jared, would you go to the bank with Heath in the morning and get the money? Thank you. You going somewhere? Uh, for a walk. You don't want to be here when Heath comes with the money. I'm ashamed, Ward. Ashamed of you for taking the money. And of myself for letting you. Oh, why didn't you try to stop me then? Could I stop you? 
Maybe. If you'd wanted to. But you don't want to. Nora, I know what's been happening. I know you're falling in love with Heath. What are you talking about? Now, I don't blame you. In fact, I understand. No, I don't think so. Yes, I do. Oh, you don't... You don't want to fall in love with Heath. But you are. And if you stay here, you will. You know, there's only one way to stop it. Get away. Never see Heath again. And that's why you want the money. Now go on for your walk. You knew what was happening and all you did was sit and watch? Do you think I enjoyed it? Yeah. I think you did. I'll tell you after we got to Montana. I guess it doesn't matter. Of course, it would be better if Heath doesn't know about it. You can't do this, Ward. Oh, come on now, look, Nora. I closed my eyes to a lot of things. And I told myself that they didn't matter. But not this time. You can't do this to Heath, and if you don't tell him, I will. Nora. We are this close. Just this close to having everything I always wanted for us. But I've already got everything I ever wanted right here. What, this place? Yes. That's what I came back to tell you. To beg you not to take the money from Heath. Ward, we could make something for ourselves here. We could... Oh, no. I'm not going to spend the rest of my life scratching in dirt for a living. Now, you don't want the money? Okay. Don't take it. But I'm going to. Please. Look, why don't you go back to that saloon where I found you? Maybe you'd like it better there. I'm going to Heath. And I'm going to tell him. No. Look, please, I'm sorry. I didn't... Let me go. I didn't mean to... Let me go. No, no I'm not going to let you go. You're not going to tell Heath. You promised me that? Look. You're not going to Heath. You promised me that? Why are you joking me? I can't... You can't breathe. You promised me you're not going to Heath? You're not going to tell Heath. Not now, not ever. You're... Yep. 
Thanks, old buddy. Where's Nora? I think she uh, said she was going for a walk or something. Oh. Well, good luck in Montana. Thanks a lot. And you'll say goodbye to Nora for me? Yeah, sure. Heath. Take off your gun belt, old buddy. Toss it down there on the floor. Do it, Heat. How long have you been walking? A few days now. Where did you say Nora was? She's on the sofa. She's dead, Heat. What? I didn't mean to do it. It was an accident. Of course, you won't believe that. And neither will anybody else. So I guess I'm gonna have to kill you. I can't help it. I gotta have a story that the sheriff will believe. I found you and Nora together and... I just lost my head like any husband might. I'm really sorry, Heath. Ward, she's alive. No. No, you're not gonna make me fall for a trick like that. Well, go on, look for yourself. Well, go on, look. things up, don't I? Yeah. One way or another. I think after so many rooms and so many houses, one more wouldn't matter. You don't have to go. <laughs> well, there's nothing here for me. I tried hard to believe that there was. Almost had myself convinced of it. You know, Ward accused me of being in love with you. I tried to deny it, but I couldn't because I wasn't sure. But now I know that all I really wanted was for Ward to be the man that you are. The truth is, you've always loved him. I don't know. Even after what's happened, I don't know. But I do know this, that Ward didn't trap me. So I don't think that anyone can really trap another. I think you trap yourself, and you free yourself. And I am free now. Because I no longer have to live on the hope that Ward will ever change. Uh, and if he does? Well, he's not far. He's in Denver. And if he does, I mean, if he really does change, he'll find me. Shall we go?
got your mind made up, have you? You got your stiff back, stubborn Jared Barkley mind made up? <laughs> I like you too, Brother Nick. No, I mean it. You have to set time apart for fun. The hills are running with deer this year. I'm afraid I can't. I have to prepare a brief. Judge Norris will be back in town on Thursday. Besides, with both you and Heath out, somebody in this family has to do an honest day's work. Uh huh. Well, I'll tell you what. When I line up that six point buck in those sights, I'm going to think of you sweating it out back in town. <laughs> Looking for someone? Is this the Barkley place? It is. You have some business with the family? Well, one of them, uh, an old friend of mine, calls himself Heath. Well, he's my brother. I'm Jared Barkley. Gil Anders. I'm afraid you won't find him at the house. He gone? He'll be back tonight. I'd be happy to give him a message. Oh, no, sir. I... I got to talk to him myself. I've been looking for him for nearly three years. Well, in that case, maybe you better wait at the house. I'm sure my sister and mother would make you comfortable. I don't want to be no trouble. No trouble at all. I'd take you up myself, but I'm due in town. Much obliged. Wasted time and trouble trying to save him. Seeing he's good as dead anyway. He a friend of yours? My brother's. He won't be for long. You're from Coryville? That's right. We've been deputized to bring him in. Don't you mean to gun him down without warning? Bring him in any way we could. Mister, you don't know the run he give us. Sly as a weasel, smart as a fox. This is the first time we even catch sight of him. So being it ain't no concern of yours, we'll just load him up and take him back. Not to Coryville, gentlemen. Not in his condition. Seems to me you're forgetting we carry a badge. A badge, not a license to kill. Mister, you just best stand aside. I mean, he ain't worth it if you do something foolish. I'm just pointing it out. Two to one. You better count again. This old mare's leg will burn a pretty big hole in you at close range. I advise you to climb back up on that horse and get out of here, the both of you. Now, come on, get. You're on private property, gentlemen. You're trespassing. Huh? But to be more specific, you're breaking the law. <laughs> We'll be back. This time we'll come with the law. Who's he? Some friend of Heath's. They never gave him a chance. Better get him out of the house before he bleeds to death. He might anyway. Easy, Nick. Let's just get a hold of Doc Marar and see if she ain't open time to eat, huh? What happened? Friend of his, bushwhacked by some alleged deputies. 
Alleged deputies? Or bounty hunters with badges from Coryville. They've got a wanted on him. Well, that's hardly proof of guilt from Coryville. What's the charge? Murder. Mur a friend of Heath? Senor Heath! I've heard of it, but I never believed it. Two left feet and a foghorn voice. What I did, senor? Oh, you just lost me a deer, that's all. A fine, beautiful six-point buck. Biggest I ever had in my sights. Oh, it's all right. He'll be back. So will I. Well? They sent me to look for you. They want you to come home. He's a friend of yours there. Friend of mine? Who? I don't know. They don't say his name. But you ask me, senor, I tell you to hurry. I think your friend, he's hurt pretty bad. Wouldn't be honest if I said it looked good. When will Heath be back? That's hard to say. Why? You say he's Heath's friend. He'll need some blood. You want a chance of transfusion? And I hope it won't clot, but if we don't take the gamble, he'll die anyway. Well, Siego's up looking for Heath right now, but you think it's safer not to wait? Let's have at it. Will you boil me some water, please? Start. Keith, we couldn't wait any longer. He said he was an old friend of yours. Doc's trying to pull him through. Let him die. Don't say anything. Just stick to things you know about. I know about Coryville. What's Coryville got to do with it? He's wanted there. Well, then send him back. To what kind of a trial, Heath? You want justice in Coryville, you ask Ben Kohler. You ask him, do you live, do you die, do you work, starve, or kiss your own wife? Judge Benjamin Coulter, the hanging judge. They say he orders men strung up like you and I would order eggs for breakfast. I'll get it. Fred? Jared? You're welcome here, Fred. They're not. Now, don't be hasty, Jared. I looked over their papers. They're deputized. They've got the right. To shoot a man from ambush? They swear we was running. It's their word against yours, Jared. But, Jared, I don't like this any more than you do, but I carry a badge, and the law is the law. Well, you're right, of course. 
Uh, may I ask who told you that Anders is in the house? Them? Oh, they did, did they? Well, uh, did you gentlemen see him in the house? Do you have any proof? Easy to prove. Just go look. Now, that would make things simple, wouldn't it? Provided, of course, you have a warrant. Warrant? Entry and search does require a warrant, if I understand the law. I'll take my chances on that. Mr. Barkley is a lawyer. Takes a warrant, we'll get a warrant. Where do we go? To town. See the judge. We'll be back later. I wouldn't think so, mister. Judge won't be back till Thursday. Late. I don't need no judge. I know Anders is in there. I'll guarantee it. You see him in there? Well, no. Did you see him carried in? No, but... But he's warned for murder, and I'll swear well, to you... Well, you can swear to the judge on Thursday. That's day after tomorrow. Two days ain't long. We'll be back. Afternoon, Jared. Afternoon, Fred. Is that Fred outside? It was. He's wanted for murder. You should have let him take him. The condition he's in, he'd be dead before they'd gone a mile. You all right, Nick? Oh, yeah, fine. All right, then, when he's well enough. That'll depend on what I find in Coryville. You're going to Coryville? Heath, I don't have any choice. I'd be an accomplice to murder if I let those deputies take him without my knowing the truth. Well, why don't you ask me? I'll tell you the truth. I'm asking. There were three of us working around the motherload country. Anders, myself, and Willie Martin, a kid just past 16. There'd been talk of a silver strike over in Nevada. We decided we'd take the short way. The desert? Yeah. But we were mostly across when the Indians hit. Yumas, screaming, shooting, and running our horses off into the dark. We held on to one and one skin of water. I figured that would be enough, each taking his turn to ride and drink. But Anders, he had different ideas. He waited until we were asleep. He took off, took the horse and the water, and left us there. I kept telling this kid he'd gone for help, and he believed me, right up until the end, just before he died. I was holding him in my arms, trying to give him some shade. And he made me swear, swear if I ever found Anders, I'd kill him. No matter what's happened in Coryville, he's earned it to die. When a court of law says so, Heath, not before. And no one for me. Mother? Audra? Nick? I'd like to be. Heath, listen to me. I just did. And what you didn't say was loud and clear. You're bringing it down to him or me. No, to right or wrong, and that leaves us no choice. You want me, I'll be in town at the hotel. Just tell me when he's left the house. I'm gonna pack. I wanna take the night stage. Don't rate the right, senor. The scent is loose again. I thought I told you. This horse is a son of a gun, always fools me, always sucks wind. How smart it... does it take to outsmart a horse? He's got a mind of his own, just like you, huh? <laughs> well, his own mind could tumble me off someday just because you're too lazy to kick him in the belly and tighten a cinch. If you let that happen again, you'll be out mending fences and chopping mesquite. It may be all you're good for anyway. I guess he just worries for his friend.
worry. Shouldn't I be? For Heath? Even more for you. I wish I could talk you out of going to Coralville. Don't try, Mother, please. But if you have to be back by Thursday, that only gives you two days. The world was made in seven. And not that I'm trying to compete. Now, look, I'll telegraph you by noon tomorrow. Promise me you won't worry. My name is Barclay. I just arrived in town. I thought maybe you might be able to help me. Pedlin? <laughs> just advice. I'm a lawyer. Lawyer, huh? Well, it don't give me no pleasure to tell you this, but you're fixing to make a living. Might as well know you're going to have to scratch for business. <laughs> well, I'm not interested in business, Marshal, just information about a man named Gil Anders. What kind of information? Oh, who he was, what he was, anything you might happen to know about him. There isn't too much to tell. He worked on jobs around town. What time he wasn't working on the red eye. Harmless enough when he was off the stuff, though. About busted me up to bring him in. I take it you arrested him. That's right. For murder. But I thought you know it. He's pure quiet when I locked him up. Should have known he was figuring to make a break. He tried to escape? I just told you. Right that same night. Tell me, Marshal, were there any witnesses to this murder? Not as I ever heard. And you put out a wanted on him, dead or alive, without so much as a witness to back up the charge? Everybody knew it was him. Without a trial. There'd have been a trial. I'd have seen to it. Yes. Yes, I'm sure you would have, Marshal. Now you want some more? You better go someplace else. Now just one more thing, Marshal. Who was he supposed to have murdered? The school teacher, Horace Ames. Why? The teacher, he sort of took care of Anders. Handouts and such. The story is he got tired of it and told Anders off. So, Anders, he waited one night for him by the schoolhouse and, uh, well, that's how it'd come to me. Thank you very much, Marshal. Mister, you say your name is Barkley? I did. You wouldn't be one of them Barkleys from up around Stockton. I would. just arrived, all the way from Stockton. If you asked me, I'd say the trip was fine. If you asked, I'd like a room, please. We're all filled up, mister. Oh? Well, if you're not, you're in trouble. 
I refer you to the state code. Specifically, chapter 7, paragraph 12, subsection C, which states, and I quote, any proprietor, clerk, or employee of a hotel or inn which refuses lodgings when such lodgings are available is guilty of a misdemeanor, punishable by a fine or imprisonment or both. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like a room, please. All right. Sixteen. Straight up the stairs, first door on your right. Oh, checkout time is two o'clock. I'll have to charge you a half a day for this morning. You do that. Ben. Dolly. Ben. Dolly, what's your problem? It ain't just mine. It's yours, too. What are you talking about? A lawyer just come into town. He's been asking me questions about Gil Anders. Asking questions won't get him nothing? Ben, I took Matt's word Anders did it. Now, I don't want to be put in the middle of anything. Someday, I'm going to get me a marshal that don't come running to me to wipe his nose. Ollie, just do as you're told. You ain't going to be in no middle. Well, I just couldn't help thinking. You talk problems. This telegram's one for real. It's from Hoover and Waiting. They're up in Stockton. They got Anders holed up, but they can't get to him. Some family up there is hiding him out. Well, they're both deputized. They can just walk in and take him. Uh, that family carries too much weight. Did you ever hear of the Barclays? Ben, I just talked to one. That lawyer feller I've been telling you about. He's a Barclay? Ben, what do we do? He's a guest. He gets to make the first move. Matt, you heard what Mr. Odom said. Why would a lawyer come all the way from Stockton to ask questions about Gil Anders? He'll find out he's wasting his time, so why don't you just stop worrying? But even... thought of that. Don't say that to me. I told you everything that happened. Get your shawl. But I tell you, Ben, I just had to give him the room. He had me twixt the tail and the snoot. Why, tossing the law at me like that? Why, I never you... knew you had much reverence for the law. It's just as well to keep an eye on him. Makes any mistakes, you come to me directly. I'll do that, Ben. You can count on that, Ben. Yes, you were leaving? Sure, Ben. You bet. You bet. She's scared, Uncle Ben. Must be that lawyer. Honey, you're causing this family a lot of trouble. Told her there won't be no trouble. Everybody in this town knows who butters their bread. Well, now, you know that, nephew, and I know that. Question is, does Mr. Barclay know it? Maybe somebody ought to teach it to him. Pulses may be a shade stronger. The transfusion helped. Did Heath come back? He's like his father, just as strong and twice as stubborn. How about Jared? He said he'd telegraph, and I'm sure he will. Let us know if you need anything. Victoria, hmm? if Heath were here, it could make the difference. Oh. 
dead man's hand. Aces and eights. Three big men. Mister, you sure like giving that green stuff away. Well, it's only money, gentlemen. Yeah, but you don't have to give it away like it was peanut shells. Them some pretty wild bets you've been making. I'll tell you what. I'll make another one. One hundred U.S. dollars. Cash. But no one at this table can tell me why Gil Anders killed a schoolteacher. Well, I guess it wasn't as wild as I thought. No one seemed to take me up on it. I'm afraid you've left me out. Well, gentlemen, thanks for the hospitality. Whiskey. I've tasted worse. Well, it's the best we got. Figured you could afford it. You on the level about that hundred bucks? I am. You go to pay me. Dropped a hundred on the table. Uh, drinks are two bits. You can have the whole bottle for a dollar. I'll take the bottle. Thanks. tell you something. And this is from a man who knows. Don't ever trust anybody. And I mean anybody. A nice girl like you could get hurt pretty bad. And the very ones you count on will be the ones that'll go against you. And then sit down to supper and never think on it twice. Give me a whiskey, please. I said, give me a whiskey. You heard the lady. Give her a whiskey. That's right, lady. No, thanks, just the same. I'm just trying to be a little friendly. The lady wants you to leave. The lady didn't say so. Well, Ed, I'm saying so. I just hope you've got a good reason. Why? Are you the only member of the family privileged to make a fool of himself? I've taken my whiskey like this before to keep the life in me when it was 10 below and we were bringing the herd down from the summer range and the snow so deep we had to wait for a freeze. I was ready to give up many times, but I didn't because your father was with me. I don't know if I could have made it had I been alone. Heath, he's alone. He may die, he may not live out the day. Just let me know and I'll dig the hole. Dr. Marat feels that if he came to and recognized you, he might... Look, I told you how it was. I want to see him dead. A rope, bullet, anything, just so he's dead. And if I can, by not being home, then I'll take that as special satisfaction. Well, I knew you could hate. But I didn't know how much.
key, please. Oh, by the way, can you tell me where I can find Amy Coulter? Mister, why don't you stay out of it and stop asking before you get hurt, huh? Sure. Matt Coulter. Judge is my uncle. Thought you'd want to think on that when you ride out. Maybe I will. When I ride out. You got a horse in the alley, all saddled and waiting. Just happens he's pointed towards Stockton. Well, now, that's very generous of you. I'll be happy to borrow him. Now. When I finish my business here in your fair city. <clears throat> that ought to do for now. Personally. Yes, I did. I, I'm having him double check every telegraph that does come in. As soon as it does, he'll send a writer out with it. Oh, now look, telegraphs have been known to be delayed. Jared promised. He said not later than noon. Well, I guess there's only one way to find out. That's for me to ride into Coryville myself. Be careful, Nick. <laughs> That's my middle name. Oh, uh, do you think maybe he's like right along? Oh, I'm sure he'd love to go. Well, it wouldn't hurt to ask. All right. Don't scare Uncle Ben. He's real stubborn-like. Wouldn't listen to reason. Figured a way to handle him? I was waiting on you for that. Now, wait. If something happens, I'm the one who'll be blamed. Now, Ben, I'm the law in this town. When I say you're the law, Could have an accident. You ain't worried none he's a Barkley? In Stockton, maybe. Here he's not. Ben, don't do it. I'm asking you. If you got no stomach for it, then get out. Now, look, Ben, this I whole... said get out. What kind of an accident do you have in mind? Freight wagon? Four up like that? Somebody gets run over. He ain't gonna ask many more questions. Oh, no, Uncle Ben, you can't. I feel guilty enough about the other. Please let him go. I'll never find out. Amy! You better go home. That's right. You'll be killed if you stay here. Please come with me. Who are you? I'm Amy Coulter.
safe here for the night. You knew the school teacher, didn't you? Yes. I want you to tell me what happened. I can't. I've got to get back. If Matt comes home, I'll be back before school starts. I will. Please let me go now. All right, I'll see you in the morning. Ten more, just to keep out the horse thieves. You boys can't beat kings. You better drop. I ought to bust you right in the teeth. Oh, now, you just go ahead and try. I'd like an excuse to tear you apart top to bottom. All right, big brother. You name the game. But anything you start, I figure to finish. Well, come on. Now, that would pleasure me. But I'd like the proper time to do the proper job. And unfortunately, right now, I don't have the proper time. But I'll tell you what. You just try me when I get back from Coryville. Coryville? Jared went down there last night. He was supposed to telegraph us. We haven't heard a word. Oh, but don't let that interfere with your card game. Gentlemen. some breakfast. Thanks. Matt went out early with the others. They're still looking for you. The stage leaves at 7.30. I packed some sandwiches. You'll be hungry on the stage. If I'm on the stage. You must leave. They'll kill you if you don't. I'm not leaving until you tell me what happened. About the school teacher? Horace and me? That's right. There was nothing. Nothing that in any way could be considered wrong. I understand. You believe me? Yes, I think I do. No one in Coryville did. I came out here from Ohio. Came out to teach. I hated it. Oh, not the children. I love the children. But this town, shoddy and vulgar. Most of all, lonely. No one to talk to. That's the worst kind of loneliness, don't you think? I suppose. And I married Matt. Found I couldn't talk to him either. And then Horace came to take over the school. And he was young and bursting with knowledge about books and, and people, science and nature. At last I had someone I could talk to. It was always in the daytime, with the children around. I said I understood. Except once, at night. Horace was working late. And I wanted to return a book. Most of all, I wanted to talk about it. So I came here, and we talked. And afterwards, Horace walked outside with me. Matt was there. He said vile, horrible things to him. Horace stood up to him. Matt killed him. Blamed it on Gil Anders. And you'd have let Anders die for that? I don't know. Matt said he'd kill me, too. If 
I wrote that out, would you sign it? Is there time? You have to catch that stage. We've got 15 minutes. That's plenty of time. Barkley uh, registered here. Barkley? Yeah. I don't believe we have a Mr. Barkley here. Well, you had him last night. What room is he in? I said, what room? 16. The key. Thanks for helping us find him. Pat, he's leaving on the stage. You'll never see him again. Pleased to see you. one that should have been on that wanted poster. Let me through. Let me through. Damn. They killed him. They gunned him down. The whole three of them. I want them under arrest. Arrest? What are you talking about? You heard me, Ali. I'm making the charge myself. Take him in. Look, Ben. Something gone wrong with your hearing. I'm charging the men with murder. It wasn't murder. I saw it. Matt fired first. They were only defending themselves. I'm telling you once more, Ollie. I want them in jail. I'm sorry, Ben. If the witness said it was self-defense. Are you trying to stand up to me?
Ben, I'm kind of partial to this badge. I aim to wear it a spell. Like it ought to be worn. All right. A couple of you men take Matt to Doc Grant's. All right, folks, no more reason for you to be standing here. Let's move along. Come on. Take Matt's horse. I'll come up for him. I don't plan on staying in this town very long. stubborn to die. That's what your blood did to him. <laughs> he only wants one thing, to talk to you. We've got nothing to talk about. Well, now, you can't be sure until you let him speak his piece. You mean to let him try and crawl out of what he did? How do you know he didn't have a good reason? Because I know Anders. He's guilty. Heath, you thought he was guilty at Coryville, too. Heath, please. time to find you. But I kept looking. Close to three years. All right, Andrew, say what you want. Let's get it over with. That was a stinking bad thing I'd done out there in the desert. No excuses for it, neither. Not then, not now. I was just too purely scared, was all. Thing like that, it stays with you. He touched your heart. It's the whole thing. You, you do something wrong, you do it mostly to yourself. What do you want from me? I know you can't forgive me. I, I got no right to ask. But I swear, I'd give my life to do it over. And that's what I come to ask. That you'd believe I would. I believe you would. for street shows, Mr. Mortensen. Oh, well, don't tell me our esteemed city attorney has dug up an ordinance against a little free entertainment. Well, Fat, you haven't given anything away for nothing in your entire career. Mr. Archer. Well, here's two tickets to tonight's performance. Down front on the aisle. First thing a man in public office learns is take a present, owe a favor. Now, Fats, just keep the noise down, huh? The most exciting act that's ever appeared in our fair city of Stockton. The lovely lady with the face of an angel and the voice of a nightingale. The sweetheart of the Sierras, Miss Liberty Keene, ladies and gentlemen. These men called the songbird of Sacramento, the golden voice of the Golden State. 
And you will hear that lovely voice on our stage here this evening. Let's hear something now. Well, friend, we can't do a whole show here on the street, but if you'll be in our theater tonight... Let's hear what she can do. Come on, come on, girlie. Give us a sample. Oh, well, now, look, friend, I just got through telling you that we can't... You're going to start singing a song or do I start shooting? Was young fools. It's all right, folks. It's all right. It's all part of the act. Ladies and gentlemen, the great Ambrose, the man whose keen eye and steady hand has won him 53 medals from the crown heads of Europe. And if you think that was sharp shooting, just wait till you see his performance on our stage tonight. Take them in, deputy. There was no real harm done, Mr. Archer. Fats here was just drumming up business for his new show. I know what he was doing. And you heard what I said. I'm, uh... Gonna have to run in for this, Fats. Justice will triumph, ladies and gentlemen. Never fear, the curtain at Morton's Theater will go up at 8 o'clock sharp tonight. Round up your songbird and let's go. Well, if you'd waited, I could have told you it was part of the act. They'll need a lawyer. Will you help them out? Well, Heath, I can't do that unless they ask me. Well, I'm asking you. call it entertainment. But the fact is, discharging firearms on a city street is in violation of Ordinance 116 and punishable by a fine of $300. $300? Archer, you know I can't spare that kind of money. Well, it seems to me you have enough money to hire very expensive legal counsel. Oh, well, uh, Mr. Mortensen and I have a little agreement. Best seats in the house for opening night, right? Fred, it seems to me that under the circumstances, $300 is a bit excessive. Well, if your client prefers, perhaps he'd take the jail sentence of 30 days. Oh, come on now, Phil. We're only dealing with the Fats Mortensen gang, not Quantrell's Raiders. <laughs> <laughs> is that the latest in San Francisco sophistication? I mean, this is a little out of your current bailiwick. What is your interest here, Jared? Well, like any other citizen of Stockton, I think I'd be disappointed if the show didn't go on. Yeah, so would I. What happened out there today could have caused serious trouble. Oh, settle down, Phil. Anybody hurt? Any damage done? That's besides the point. There wasn't anything to boil over about. Well, what do you want me to do? Ignore the entire incident because Jared Barkley is involved? Well, now it seems to me that the punishment ought to fit the crime. Fred, why don't we have Mr. Mortensen do a show at the orphanage as a condition of his release? Agreed, Fats? Well, fine, fine. All right, it's settled then. Now, clear him out of here. Mr. Barkley, thank you very much. The tickets will be at the box office. Liberty, my dear? Well, oh, it's apparent to me, Sheriff, that you and I have to reach some kind of understanding about our respective duties. Now, don't go puffing up like a turkey gobbler, Phil. You're fresh in your job, and I've had mine for ten years. I can see I'm going to have to cure your buck fever just like I did Jared's when he first took over your job. <laughs> How well I remember. If you'd like to hear the sad story, I'll buy you a drink. To celebrate what? How the big-time San Francisco attorney got the best of a small-town lawyer? No, thank you. <laughs>
Liberty? Yes? A message for you at the stage door. Oh, thank you, Mr. Morton. Oh, uh, you better get some food into him. All right. has health, wealth, and uh, I hope happiness. And a Liberty Keen, sweetheart of Strawberry and now of Stockton. Mm -hmm. You know, Heath, when I was a very little girl, Papa used to read me stories at night. And there was a book we both loved. It was about a, a poor ragamuffin boy who grew up to learn that he had great expectations. I'm very happy for you, Heath. I've often wondered how you've been making out, Libby. Well, now you know. I'm sorry you never made it to New York, Libby. <laughs> What's funny? Oh, life. When you were 16 years old, you begged me to run away and marry you. Remember? And, and Papa ran you off? <laughs> well, that wasn't funny. Not to me. Oh, nor to me. But Papa kept saying, just that far away, Libby. Just that far away from success. After Papa died, I went back to Strawberry to look for you. But it, uh, was too late. You'd already gone. I, I guess everything turns out for the best. Did it, Libby? Just think, if I had run off with you that summer, why, right now, you wouldn't be a dashing, eligible bachelor entertaining actresses with the champagne suppers. Well, I don't make a habit of it. The suppers or the proposals. I know that. Any other man would have arranged this whole supper just to show a girl what she, what she missed. Not you. You're kind and concerned. It's almost as if you still cared a little. You don't stop caring about people just because you're separated. Keith, if only we could turn time back. If we could just be the way we used to be. But I, I guess that isn't possible. But I, I had tonight and I'll always be grateful for that. That sounds like you're saying goodbye. That's right. But why? Well, I'm not sure what time the saloons close here in Stockton, but when they do, the great Ambrose will come weaving his way back to the theater. And if I'm not there... And if you're not there, what? He'll either fall asleep in a drunken stupor or be waiting up for me in a wild, jealous rage. Well, does he have a right to be jealous? He's my husband. I needed somebody to, to look after me. Don't you see? Like, like Papa used to do. So I... I settled for Ambrose. Just like everything else in my life, it went wrong. I ended up taking care of him. I'll take you back now, Libby. You're, uh, angry with me, aren't you? Well, I guess you have every right to be. He's... If what I did tonight seems, well, shameless to you, I'm sorry. It, it's just that living the way I do, you, you learn to snatch at a moment of happiness. 
I thought I could stop loving you, Heath. But I guess I never will. A touching reading, my dear. But then you've made a specialty of these scenes, haven't you? No, he's drunk. Not that drunk, my dear. Just remember what I told you, I never kill. I never have to. I can place a bullet so that life isn't worth living. Goodbye, Heath. Libby, I can't let you. Oh, I'll be all right. After all, where else could he find such a willing target? My wife has a penchant for rich, young admirers. But strangely enough, she always comes back to me. that, darling. It was the only thing you could do. Well, well, he barked. What'd he do, rob the Frisco Mint? Shut up, Tedro. Sheriff, now that this here is such a high-class jail, I'll be expecting a doily on my breakfast tray. I can't help this, Heath. Rules. When Jared gets here, ask him if he knows a smart lawyer. You won't be needing a smart lawyer. You can get away with murder just as long as your name's Barkley. You said you knew Heath Barkley in the mining camps. That's right. Well, how well did you know him? I told you we grew up together. We were... Friends. Just friends? What's going on here? Where's he? He's in a cell, Jared. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I had to lock him up. I apologize for treating him just like any other murder suspect. How many times do I have to tell you it was self-defense? Why won't he listen to me? Now, you remember Miss Keene by her stage name. She's the victim's wife. Heath shot her husband tonight. What makes you use the word murder? I believe I said murder suspect. At the moment, it's just a death under mysterious circumstances until the coroner's jury says otherwise. You're scheduling an inquest? Three o'clock tomorrow afternoon at the theater where the shooting took place. Tell me something, Archer. Have you really got a case, or is this just a chance to... Make the Barclays sweat. I'm not a fool, Jared. I have a case. A good one. Look, just because you bail me out of jail, you don't have to follow me around. What's the matter? You object to my company? I just want to see Liberty alone. Now, for appearance's sake, it would be a lot wiser for you to avoid any personal contact until after the appearances inquest. Appearances be hanged. Now, I'm not letting Liberty face this alone. I was so worried about you. I got here as soon as I could. Whatever arrangement she's made, I'll take care of everything. Now, I don't want you to now, feel... Now, it's all settled. 
Are you coming back to the house and stay with us until this is all over? Well, thank you. I don't think I could face going back to that theater alone right now. Uh, Heath, the inquest is at 3 o'clock. I, I think it would be better if you stayed in town. Well, we can come back. We both have to clean up and change clothes. This is hardly an appropriate costume for an inquest. Well, I'm sure Audrey can find you something. Let's go home. it all straightened out? I'll explain later. Mother, Audra, this is Liberty Keene. I'm very glad to know you. How do you do? How do you do? I wish we were meeting under happier circumstances. I do, too. I've invited Libby to stay a few days with us. Good. I hope I'm not imposing. Not at all. Oh, what a lovely chandelier. Heath, do you remember the one back in Strawberry? The, the one in the hotel? You remember the bet I won for Papa? Her father made a bet that Libby could rattle the crystals with her singing. I broke some of them. The money Papa won helped pay for the repairs. Libby, why don't you try and get some rest? Audra, would you show our guest to her room? Come on, Heath. We got some talking to do. Never get arrested for murder in a pair of tied boots. Well, Heath? Now, don't get that look. There's nothing to worry about. There's plenty to worry about. And the sooner you get that through your head, the better off you'll be. The great Ambrose tried to kill me. I shot him in self-defense. How many ways can I say it? Then why does Phil Archer call it murder? How should I know? He's much too smart to try for an indictment without some pretty good evidence. Happened just like I told you. Now, let me see if I've got this straight. You and the victim's wife renewed an old love affair over a midnight supper at the Alhambra Club. It was never an affair. Then you returned her to the theater at a rather late hour and were confronted by her understandably angry husband. He was drunk, crazy jealous. Life with him must have been hell for her. A relationship nonetheless sanctified by marriage vows. Jared, is this necessary? I'm afraid it is. Now, tell me again what happened in that alley. He made threats. She went inside. Threats against whom? Me. And in spite of those threats, you entered a dark theater and killed him. A professional marksman in a fair fight. Now, do you expect a jury to believe that? Jared, you've got it all wrong. Haven't I told the truth? It's the word you use. You expect the prosecutor to use nicer words? All right, all right, Jared. Now, you've acted out the devil's advocate. Why? Surely you don't think Heath is guilty. Of course, I don't think he's guilty. The trouble is, how are we going to prove it? Well, I'll match Jared against that smug Jaybird Archer any day. Well, wake me in an hour, huh? isn't it? Sure it is. There's nothing to worry about. I will tell it just like it happened and that'll be the end of it. <sighs> Libby, I was raised on trouble. It'll be all right. Trust me. Read all about the murder. Read all about the murder in the theater. Come and get your paper Willie, right Willie. now. You can't go on shouting about a murder. This can't rightfully be called a murder until a coroner's jury says a crime has been committed. But when they do that, then we can legally accuse a suspect. The day this town accuses a Barkley is the day the horn will sound judgment. Well, now, don't sell your fellow citizens short. They're honest men, and they'll hand down an honest verdict without fear or favor. <laughs> I wonder 
how much it will cost them to get out of this. Heath was standing right there, right where you are, with a gun in his hand. Did he say anything? He said, I killed him. I killed him. That'll be all, Sheriff, thank you. Unless you wish to bring forward any other facts pertinent to this murder. The word murder, Mr. Archer, is completely out of order here. I stand corrected. And remind you that any defense of your brother at this time is equally out of order. And I remind you both that this is an inquest, not a trial, and I am in charge. You're dismissed, Sheriff. Do you have any further witnesses, Mr. Archer? Yes, sir. Call Mrs. Liberty Keen Carson, please. Mrs. Carson? Place your hand on the book. Swear to tell the truth as you see it, so help you. I do. Now, you are Liberty Keene, the widow of Ambrose Carson. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. And the great Ambrose was billed as the world's finest pistol shot. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. Well, isn't it ironic that he should be shot dead in a fair fight? But it was a fair fight. Ambrose had a gun in his hand and was stalking Heath when, when I called out to warn him. Well, madam, I find it very peculiar that you should show greater loyalty to a stranger than you did to your own husband. I told you before, Heath Barkley and I are old friends. We grew up together in the mining camps. An old friend who saw nothing reprehensible about a clandestine supper with a married woman? Heath knew nothing of my marriage. I trust the prosecutor will introduce into evidence the fact that the young lady and my brother met just yesterday for the first time in seven years. Hardly enough time to hatch a conspiracy, gentlemen. Sir, I have no evidence of conspiracy. Only evidence of a cold-blooded murder. Well, gentlemen of the jury, I'd like you to recall the coroner's report that was read to you earlier. It stated that the witness's husband was a victim of two bullet wounds, one in the right arm and the second fatal one in the right temple. Now, the deed isn't very hard to reconstruct, is it? The first shot hit him in his right arm, his gun arm, preventing him from returning any fire with any degree of accuracy. Then the killer came forward and, taking careful aim, shot out his victim's life. Now, that's the way it happened, isn't it? No. No? No, it happened some other way? Or no, you didn't see him shoot your husband? Because you ran outside when the gun started going off. Well, that's it, isn't it? That's it. You were lying when you said you saw a shooting in self-defense. You didn't see anything. You didn't see anything! I told the truth. It was the truth! You told a lie! You told a lie in order to save a man about whom you were so concerned after the shooting. A man you called Darling standing over the dead body of your husband. Motive for murder, gentlemen. Lust for a beautiful woman. A motive as old as original sin. Sorted reading, doesn't it? I heard the porter call you Mr. Barclay. Are you one of them? What's it to you? Well, don't get huffy. I'm Fletcher of the Oakland Bulletin. If there's another side to that story, I'm the man to see it gets into print. Anything to say? Nothing. Been a Salinas horse auction. Kind of a shock, huh? You might say that, yes. I guess right now you're wishing the old man's cold had never come out of the woods. Nobody says that about him to me. You better get used to it. You're gonna find people like a good scandal, Barkley. And when the mud's on you rich ones, they like it twice as much.
How's Libby? Is she all right? She's fine. You know, I'm glad she's got you to look after her. Libby's had a hard time all her life. Right now, there's something hurt and helpless about her. She needs somebody to take care of her. It's you we're concerned about. Well, if strict orders, he was to have no visitors. Sheriff gave Miss Barkley special permission. Them being such important people and all. Shut up, Tedro. That's right, please, Mrs. Barkley. I'm sorry, Fred. I really can't understand your objections to my seeing my son. Well, your son is about to be tried for murder. Just because his name is Barkley doesn't give him any special consideration. Nor should it prejudice people against him. Oh? Well, are you accusing me of prejudicial behavior, Mrs. Barkley? Have you been reading the papers, Mr. Archer? Neither of us can control the free press. Not even to make it clear that half-truths have been twisted? You have one opinion, the coroner's jury had another. The newspapers are entitled to theirs. Not when they try to blame Heath for something beyond his control. The name he bears. Well, it seems to me you're unduly sensitive on that point. It's my name and I'm proud of it. I don't like seeing it smeared. Do you really believe there would be all this newspaper notoriety if a Barclay Warren involved? Would it cause statewide interest if, if that man Tedrow were on trial? Now, I'll overlook your doubts about my integrity, Mrs. Barkley. But let me tell you this. Your coming here didn't help his case at all. I intend to examine every word of the testimony of the widow and the defendant. And if there's any change, well, there could be an accusation of conspiracy with you as intermediary. That was not the purpose of my visit. You have my word for that. And the word of a Barkley is sacrosanct. There's only one step from envy to hate, Mr. Archer. And I think you've already taken it. Nick! Jared! Hello, Mother. Hi. How is he? Oh, very calm, for my benefit. I'm afraid you can't see him. Bill Archer says no one but Jared can see him until the trial. Well, I just want to tell him I'm back and he had nothing to worry about, so I'll tell him, Nick. No. See you both at the house. The rig is over here. Does that mean you're sure he's going to be acquitted? It means he'd no more commit murder than herd sheep. The new Barclays intend to stand behind him all the way. With everything we've got. You ought to be more careful with words. That could be construed as a threat to use the Barclay money, prestige, and influence to make sure your brother gets off. Well, now, I wouldn't say it quite that way if I were you. You trying to tell me what I can write? I'm trying to tell you you misquote me and you're going to get yourself in an awful lot of trouble. Is that a threat? That's a promise. Thank you for a very good quote, Mr. Barclay. I think you're going to find out you aren't so high and mighty. Nick! Nick! I suggest you pour yourself a drink, Nick. I guarantee you, you're going to need it. Oh, why? We have our name in the paper. Ranching heir Nick Barkley to death threatened. What a filthy rotten lies. How, how can they print lies like that about important people? Well, it's a rather involved question of semantics. Now, Nick may have only said promise to that newspaper man, but I understand he said it rather forcefully. Well, now, what was I supposed to do? Just let him get away with it? You know, your father used to say, when you wear a silk hat, you must be able to duck. Otherwise, you make yourself a target for every bobtail who can throw a rock. Now, that's the price you pay for being a Barkley. Yeah. Only in Heath's case, it could be a lot more than just rocks. It could be a rope. No, they, they can't. They, they can't do that, not to Heath. We won't let them, will we, Jared? Believe me, Liberty, we'll do everything we can. Jared. Jared, you have got to make them listen. You've, you've got to make them understand how he was. He, he was cold and cruel and insanely jealous. If only I hadn't gone to see Heath that night. It, if, if I hadn't screamed after Ambrose hit me. That's why he came back, to help me. Now we've got to find 
find a way to help him. You're going to get another lawyer to defend now me. Now, calm down, will you? Porter Hammond is one of the best. He's a master with the jury. The prosecutor wants to see you, Jared. It's important. All right. Jared. We don't need another lawyer. I think we do. Public opinion is running against us. We need somebody outside the family. No. I put my money on you, and it's staying on you. Hammond is on his way over here. I'm starting to feel sorry for you. He's trying to back out. Maybe you ain't such a member of the family as you thought. I wouldn't have believed it of you, Jared. I wouldn't have believed you've been so stupid. He had nothing to do with it. I told you that. Nothing to do with what? Go on, tell the big-time San Francisco lawyer what you just told me. Well? I killed Ambrose. Well, doesn't that surprise you, Barkley? Archer thinks you put her up to it. Figuring a jury would go easier on a pretty woman. Well, Liberty, if you're telling the truth, that means that Heath is lying, doesn't it? He must be taking the blame for you. Heath knew nothing about it. The theater was dark. He, he didn't see me fire the shot. With the what? With a gun you just happened to have in your hand? The gun case was on the table. Ambrose had one. I used the other. And you claim that in the dark, with all those bullets flying around, yours was the one that killed him? I'm a very good shot. Really? Sheriff, let me have your pistol. We'll check and see how well Mr. Barkley has coached you. Don't push me too far, Phil. I don't need her to win this case, and you know it. Well, just in case you're tempted, we'll put her to the test. Look, that wanted poster up on the wall, the man in the poster. Go ahead, shoot him. Now, were your hands shaking that much that night? Go ahead, it's dark. The guns are going off. Show us how you hit him. Go ahead. Go ahead, you don't have the time now. Go ahead and shoot. <laughs> Do you realize you might have gone to prison if your ability to handle a gun had been any better? You lied here, and you lie on the stand. Reconstructing the crime, Counselor? Something like that. Those are the dressing rooms, huh? Oh, uh, yeah. Would you mind unlocking them for me? Oh, not at all. Oh, say, by the way, uh, if it's any uh, use to you, Ambrose was hitting the bottle pretty hard that night. Oh, really? Yeah, I noticed it before they went on. I told her to get some food in to him. Poor thing, I sure feel sorry for her. This is hers, huh? Oh, uh, yeah, this is his right next to it. I wonder what she's going to do now. It's, you know, it's kind of hard on a young woman, all alone and near broke. She never could make it singing. I guess she can always go back to sharpshooting. I didn't know Liberty did any shooting. Oh, sure. Ambrose taught her all kinds of trick shots. I caught their act once a couple of years ago. Just like all the others, until he got the bright idea of uh, making her the unexpected target. You know, kind of surprised the audience. Him pretending he's drunk and she's in danger. Uh, well, uh, when you're finished, I'll be in my office. Thank you very much. Well, may I 
come in. Well, is it something that can't be taken care of at the office? I've come to ask a favor, Phil. A big one. Come in. Sit down. <laughs> I didn't know you still paid the two for Phil. Why should you know? We haven't traveled in the same circle since we were in law school together. Seems to me we were friends then. People and water, they both seek their own level. What is the favor, Jared? Phil, I want you to consider, just for the sake of argument, the possibility that Liberty might have been telling the truth yesterday. You know, I figured you were bluffing when you said you didn't need her to win your case. She said she was a good shot. Yeah, well, you saw how good. Good enough to be part of the act at one time. Then how do you explain what happened yesterday? Nervousness, cold feet, or possibly the expert way you drove at her. At any rate, she was at the scene of the crime, and I'm convinced she had a reason for wanting Ambrose dead. Speculation. There's no way to prove that. But there is. We can compare the death bullet with a bullet fired from Heath's gun. Oh, the bullet was never removed. Why not? Well, Heath was found standing over a dead man with a gun in his hand. He confessed to the killing. There was no need to mutilate the body. Phil, I want to see those bullets. I want you to agree to an order of exhumation. That's the favor. He's buried in the churchyard. That's consecrated ground. I know that, but there's legal precedent. It was ordered in San Francisco three months ago. But this is not San Francisco. Here in Stockton, the dead have a right to sleep undisturbed. What's more important, Phil? Respect for the dead or justice for the living? I'm a public official. Now, that's very important to me. I've worked very hard for a very long time. May I ask what that has to do with it? Well, I wouldn't expect a successful big city lawyer to understand. I'm only interested in justice, equal justice. What is it you resent, Phil? The fact that I didn't have to work as hard for success as you did? Don't be ridiculous. Then why are you out to get Heath? Why do you refuse to even consider the possibility that he may be innocent? Because he is guilty! And none of your courtroom magic can cheat justice! You know something? You're infected. Infected with the same blind rich man, poor man prejudice that's spreading all through this town. Or are you the source of it? Get out of here. Go on, get out. you rob a grave, I can't do that. We've got permission. Not from Archer. You went to the judge? We figure that bullet can clear Heath. Or put a rope around his neck. expect this kind of cooperation, Phil. I want to thank you. You're risking everything, Barkley. Your reputation, your career, and your brother's life. Libby, what are you doing here? Mr. Archer said there may be a way I could help you. Well, that isn't quite correct. I wanted you here while we conducted this experiment. You see, Mr. Barkley has a theory that it was you who killed your husband. That's a lie. She couldn't have. I, I wish I had. I wish it had been me instead of Heath. Jared, you leave her out of this. I'm afraid I can't do that, Heath. 
You see, bullets from the same gun have identical markings and weight. Now, we're going to compare the death bullet, the one on that scale there, with the bullet from Heath's gun. This is your gun, isn't it? That's right. Well, this scale is from the assay department of the bank. It's completely accurate. I'm so sure, I'm so very sure. I had to kill him. I had to. I was afraid for Heath. Ambrose would have killed him. It would have been my fault. All my fault. You didn't have to kill him to prevent that. You're an expert shot, Liberty. Despite that deceptive exhibition you put on here, you could have placed this bullet anywhere you wanted. You wanted him dead. shoot me. Get a doctor. No. I'm trying to talk. I have to talk. I have to make you understand. I, I never wanted to hurt you, Heath. I, I never thought you'd go to trial. Thought the Barclays were too important. There's no need to explain. Help me. Make them understand. I had to kill him. You, you saw how he was. How he treated me. could I escape? How, how else could I marry you? Libby. Where are all the bright lights Papa promised? Where, Papa? Dream almost, almost 
came true. Just run far away. Libby? Libby? you punish yourself this way. They're both dead. She killed Ambrose because of me. No. She killed him because she was too weak at 16 to live your kind of life and too weak at 25 to live with her own mistakes. I keep remembering when we were kids all of the things she wanted. And all her life they were just out of reach. that far away. She wanted the wrong things. And she could have had so much. So very much. I've come to apologize. Well, you were right about me. It was a personal resentment of you. Of your success. And your way with people. Now, oh, if either of you want further satisfaction, we can go out behind the barn. Well, what do you think, Heath? Down by Snyder's Creek? Well, since there isn't going to be any trial tomorrow, we can see if the fish are biting. Well, after everything that happened... If it'll make you feel any better, Phil, you can dig the worms. <laughs> <laughs> 